Okay, thank you, Xavi, for this introduction, and uh, thank you for the organizers for uh, this opportunity to present part of my PhD work. So uh, I am a PhD student at University of Strasbourg and working with interactive robotics unit. Uh, so in my talk today, I will uh, uh, present uh, some problems that we can face uh, in practice and how uh, to design, uh, mainly how to design champion uh, multi-sign excitation for closed loop identification of both screw cable system. So this uh, work is done in collaboration with the Yom Mercer from University of Poitiers, Mathieu Grosser from Serialist and Ido Alaoj from University of Strasbourg. Let's first start uh, our talk by a brief introduction to collaborative robotics. To mention the motivation behind our work. So during the last years, uh, automation has been related to the use of rigid robots, which are programmed to do repetitive tasks with speed and precision. These uh, rigid robots are placed in cages as shown in the picture to protect operators from any contact or danger, for example. Consequently, uh, the flexibility and uh, human experience are missed during the execution of industrial tasks. However, recently, the need to include the human experience in the industrial robotics loop has increased. This is why we can find now a new generation of robots. They are called collaborative robots or cobots. These cobots, they can work uh, hand in hand with humans for example, to provide physical assistance to operators during the execution of painful tasks. And this collaboration between a human and the robots is ensured by the use of compliant elements, such as, for example, this uh, screw cable system that we can find in uh, this uh, cobot system, Cyb3 of society, Isable. However, such elements, they introduce flexible modes in the dynamic of cobots, which is nonlinear and hard to model with the physical laws and required high skills in robotics. So to overcome these problems, we, to overcome these problems and to find the models that uh, mimic the dynamic of these cobots and capture the, their flexible behavior, we use the tools developed in the field of system identification where the main goal is to firstly identify non-parametric estimation of the frequency uh, response function using multi-sign excitation. So after that, find the, find the parametric model to synthesize controllers. Notice that those systems are unstable in open loop, which implies that their identification is performed in closed loop setup. Moreover, they are subject to saturation to protect actuators. Therefore, the control signal is limited and cannot exceed some values. So with all these elements, a proper design of the excitation signal is needed. That's why in my talk today, I will focus mainly on experiment design for non parametric identification of the frequency response function. The question here is how to design multi-sign excitation to find the best linear approximation in presence of saturation on the control signal. So our system, the Boss Crew Cable System, can be represented with this diagram, where in our case, the, the multi-sign excitation can be applied only at the reference level. And the challenge here is how to find the, the underlying linear model of this nonlinear system while not exceeding the saturation. So to answer these questions, we will address in this talk today, these points. First, we will describe the multi-sign excitation and how to, use, how to design it to detect the non-linearities. After that, we give a brief uh, explanation about the best linear approximation, how to find the best linear approximation in presence of non-linear distortions. Then we introduce a metric that allows to quantify the quality of signal that is called Christ factor and how to optimize its value using an iterative algorithm. Then after that, we will show how to tune the reference for our case, such that the control signal will reach a desired Christ factor. And finally, my talk will finish by showing some, some simulation result on the estimation of a Bosch cable system. 
So we'll start with the first point, which is monthly sign excitation for detection of nonlinearities. So in uh, literature, multi sign has proved to be a powerful tool for the estimation of frequency response function. Due to this, uh, due to their, uh, due to its advantages, well, first it allows to avoid the problems, uh, leakage problems. The the leakage introduce uh, the introduce bias on the frequency response function. Also, it allows to perform measurements during short uh, during a short duration because all the frequencies are uh, excited at the same time. And finally, by uh, specific design of multi sign spectrum, we can classify, detect, and quantify nonlinear distortions. So, if we have uh, F max harmonics, the multi sign is defined by this equation, where AK represents the amplitude of the multi sign, FK are the multiples of fundamental frequency F0, and FK are the multi sign faces. These two, these uh, three parameters are a user's choice, and by Setting AK, we fix the spectral density of multi sign. The phases VK fix the probability density function of the multi sign, while the frequencies FK can be split in odd or even multiples of the fundamental frequency. For example, if we hear, if we talk about node random multi sign uh, signal, where here by uh, odd we mean that it's only some. All the harmonics are excited and all even harmonics are omitted, as we can see in this plot. So here we have harmonics at the first rank, third rank, and so on. Moreover, among these odd harmonics, we can omit some odd harmonics and we get a node spectrum with holes. After that, the even and uh, odd omitted harmonics are called detection lines and they allow to declassify and detect nonlinearities. To illustrate the idea, let's consider that we have this spectrum of multi sign where only some harmonic odd harmonics are excited. If we have a linear system and we excite it with this multi sign, the output spectrum will contain the same harmonics. However, if we have nonlinear system, the output spectrum will depend on the parity of the nonlinearity. That's why if we have even nonlinearity, the odd harmonics, they will become even harmonics, like we see here in blue. And for odd nonlinearity, it creates additional odd harmonics, as we see here in red. Finally, for nonlinear system, the output spectrum will contain the contribution of three parts, the linear part, the even nonlinearity, and the odd nonlinearity. Here at the output spectrum, the the blue and the red lines allow to distinguish between the linear part that is here represented in black and the, and the non-linear part. So with this uh, in mind, we move to the next point, which represents the, how to find the best linear approximation. So for non-linear systems that uh, we can excite, that, uh, that are excited with multi, odd multi-sign uh, signal, and that we can represent with the Voltaire series, their uh, frequency response function can be divided in this form where GBLI here represent the best linear approximation of the underlying model. The nonlinear distortions are captured by the G of S and finally V of, v of G represent the noise contribution. So the aim is to reduce whether the noise contribution or the nonlinear distortions. And for this, there exist two solutions as proposed in this uh, reference. The first one, if we are, uh, the aim is to reduce the noise contributions, we can repeat or we can measure P periods of the multi-sign where P here represents the number of repeated, uh, repeated uh, periods of the multi-sign. And by increasing, the time duration will reduce the noise contributions. While if the aim is to reduce uh, noise contribution and, uh, and nonlinear distortions, we perform several realizations. And by several here, we mean that we will generate new random phase, uh, M, M new random phase. 
And by calculating the averages over the periods and the realization, we can reduce the nonlinear distortions and the noise contributions. So for more details and for those who are interested in this topic, you can check the, this reference to, for more details. So once we presented the, how to find the best linear approximation, we move to the optimization of the case factor. So as I said before, that uh, by choosing random faces of multi-sign and repeating several uh, realization, we can reduce noise contributions and nonlinear distortions. However, choosing random phase for multi-sign can lead often to a signal that contain high peaks in time domain, as we see here in this picture. And for systems that are subject to saturate, that, uh, that uh, contain saturation, these high peaks may introduce distortions in the non-parametric estimation. So a trivial solution that we can think about is to reduce the amplitude of the multi-sign to avoid the saturation. However, for noisy data, this could affect the accuracy of the estimation. So to, for this reason, we introduce a metric that allows to quantify the quality of the signal. This metric is called the case factor, and it is defined as, as the ratio uh, of the peak of the signal over its error mass. The value of the case factor depends on the type of the signal. For example, if we have here pseudo random binary sequence, the case factor is equal to one. For sine wave signal, the case factor is equal to square root of two. However, for random faces, the case factor is above two. Notice that the value of the case factor indicate how much energy we are injecting to the system. And the lower the case factor is, the more energy is injected into the system. So we, we get a higher asana. So the challenge here or the work uh, that is done on the case factor consists on maximizing the RMS, or in other words, we, we look at minimizing the case factor. This problem was studied in the, in the literature and there exist two kinds of solutions to minimize the case factor. First ones are analytical solutions or mostly we can talk about Schroeder phase that allows to reduce the case factor quickly. However, for node uh, multi-science as we present before or non-flat uh, multi-science spectrum, the, so the analytical solution failed to give an optimal case factor. On the other side, we find numerical solutions that are based on iterative algorithms, where the idea is to tune iteratively the phase to reduce the case factor. However, there is no satisfactory proof of curvatures for these numerical solutions. So as I said before, in our case, we use odd random phase multi-sign. That's why in the optimization of case factor, we will use numerical solutions. And one of the famous uh, algorithm is van der Odera algorithm that where the idea consists on clipping the time domain signal iteratively at some values defined by sigma times the max of the signal. Sigma here represent the clipping function. So for this algorithm, we generate uh, first, we generate randomly uh, faces and the arbitrary amplitudes. I'll show the picture here. So here we have an amplitude of the multi-sign and the phase, uh, phase of multi-sign. Notice that the spectrum is uh, contains rules, so we have odd multi-sign signal. Then we transform this signal to the time domain using the inverse Fourier, Fourier, inverse Fourier transform. After that, we use this sigma function to clip the signal at some values. What, what do we mean by clipping? That we will cut cut off some, uh, we will cut off the peaks at values sigma times the max of the signal. Once the clipping is done, so we, we go back to the frequency domain uh, where we will get new amplitude spectrum and new phase spectrum. However, in this algorithm, we keep the same amplitude spectrum as the initial one, and we extract the new phase. 
we repeat this so algorithm for a uh, given number of iterations to get by the end an optimized or multi sign signal with an optimized crest factor. So in our work, we choose also uh, this logarithmic clipping function. But uh, uh, it depends on uh, two parameters and A and B. And the choice of the parameters define the percentage of clipping. So in our case, A and B are chosen such that we will start the, such that the sigma function will uh, increase monotonically from 0 0.7 to 1. So initially, we will uh, cut 30% of the initial signal. And the, at the end of iteration, we will cut, well, there will be no cut. So, so here we have zero cutoff. For example, to show the result that we get with this uh, algorithm, we consider that our frequencies are in uh, between 0 0.1 and 20 Hertz. And we choose uh, a k such that the RMS of the signal is equal to one. And also, as I said, we have only some odd harmonics that are, that are excited. So on this plot, we, we uh, on this figure, we plot the initial, uh, the initial signal and the optimized signal, optimized the signal, uh, signal with optimized risk factor. So we can see here that the initial signal contains high peaks. In contrary, the optimized signal does not, ex uh, which is not the case, sorry, uh, yeah, for the optimal, the optimized signal. Notice that the, these two signals have the same RMS, so we didn't reduce the amount of energy. Also, we plot the variation of the case factor, and we can see that uh, the case factor value drops from 7.93 to 1.51. And the algorithm takes only a few minutes to give an optimal solution. For a few seconds, sorry, to give an optimal solution. So now we move to uh, closed loop identification. And we will show uh, how to tune the reference to, to, have, to get a desired signal with, uh, to get control signal with a desired twist factor. So uh, as I said before, our system is unstable. That's why we cannot apply directly the, the signal at the, uh, at the, we cannot apply the multi-sign signal at uh, the control level. And in our case, the multi-sign can only be injected at the reference level. For this, the, the goal here is to tune the multi-sign signal such that the control signal reach a desired case factor. So to our knowledge, this problem has not been treated in uh, the literature. And to answer this uh, problem, we suggest this iterative algorithm, where uh, this algorithm takes as an input a desired spectrum of the control signal. So we generate a desired control signal with the uh, the algorithm uh, I, I presented before. And we get at the, at the output of this algorithm, the reference excitation. So firstly, we excite the system with an arbitrary excitation, multi-sign excitation. We measure the control, we measure the spectrum of the control signal. We measure the control signal, then we compute the spectrum. And by knowing also the reference uh, signal, we estimate the transfer function from the reference to the control signal. And by estimating uh, that this transfer function is inversible, we can compute its inverse. After that, we compute a new uh, reference spectrum by this equation. And we go back to the time domain and we repeat these steps uh, again until that the distance between the desired control spectrum and the measured control uh, control spectrum becomes lower than epsilon. So uh, this algorithm, uh, in this case, if the transfer function between the reference and the control signal is known, this algorithm would converge. Uh, within one iteration. However, it's not the case. 
uh, because uh, all th the transfer function from the reference to the control signal is not known, is unknown. And our algorithm needs uh, some iterations to converge to uh, the desired solution. So uh, now we move to the next point where the aim here is to study the effect of saturation on the control, on the spectrum of the control signal. We assume that the data is noise free. And uh, firstly, we consider that we don't use uh, the shaping algorithm. Frequencies here are between 0 0.1 and 20 Hertz. And the saturation is equal to plus, uh, plus or minus 1.5. We don't scale the amplitudes of the multi sign to respect the limitation of the saturation. We measure only, we measure two periods of the multi sign because there is no noise in this case. And we perform only one realization of a random phase multi sign. Moreover, in order to detect nonlinearities that might come from saturation, we consider that the spectrum contains only some odd harmonics. So here on this plot, the black uh, plus sign represents the excited odd harmonics. The red circles are the non-excited odd harmonics. And the blue plus sign represents non-excited even harmonics. So by Applying this uh, reference signal on the system, we measure the control signal and we plot its amplitude. And what we observe on the amplitude spectrum of the control, the, we observe the, the presence of uh, non-excited odd harmonics. Those excited odd harmonics come uh, from uh, the saturation because, uh, as I explained before, the odd nonlinearity create extra harmonics only at uh, other uh, other ranks, and in our case, and uh, saturation is uh, known to be not the nonlinearity function. So with this result, we can also confirm that uh, by not respecting the saturation, we the extra the, the extra non-excited harmonics will create distortions in, in the estimation of the frequency response function. So to avoid this, we now uh, use the shaping algorithm, where we initially we start with flat, uh, flat amplitude spectrum of the, the reference. And after 19 iterations, the algorithm converts to the desired solution, where here we plot the amplitude spectrum of the, the, the tuned reference. And by applying this amplitude spectrum on our system, we get at the control signal a flat uh, amplitude spectrum. And also we observe that uh, the non-excited odd harmonics and non-excited even harmonics are not, uh, doesn't, doesn't appear in the, in the control, uh, in the amplitude spectrum of the control signal. Why? Because in this case, uh, due to the shaping algorithm, the nonlinearity is avoided. Note, in order to evaluate our algorithm, we plot also two uh, metrics. The first one is the stopping criterion. That represents the distance between the desired and the measured control spectrum. And the relative error between the true model and the estimate model between the reference and the control signal. So here uh, on the stop criterion uh, plot, we observe that for epsilon equal to 10 to the power of minus two, the algorithm converges within 19 iteration. And that the relative error start to decrease monotonically from the eighth iteration to reach 5% at the 19 iteration. Also, in order to, uh, to show the impact of the shaping algorithm on the quality of the improvement of the SNR, now, in this case, we consider that the data is affected by uh, Gaussian zero mean white noise. And the SNR, and we calculate the SNR at the output level with this equation. So for, for uh, three levels of the noise, low, medium, and high, we calculate the SNR with and without the shaping algorithm. 
we observe that uh, the suggested solution allowed to improve the value of the SNR at the output level. The solution has an, impo has an, uh, an impact on the estimation of the frequency response function, and we will see, see it in the coming slides. So now once we, uh, we, we tune the reference for closed loop identification, we will apply this uh, reference to estimate the transfer function of both Kiro cable system uh, in simulation. So as I said in the beginning that uh, the both Kiro cable system was developed for co manipulation and such system is composed mostly of an electrical motor, two pulleys, a belt, cables, and the screw net system. And the flexibility in this system comes mostly from the cables. Such system is uh, described by these two coupled nonlinear equations, where nonlinearity comes mostly from friction torques and the elastic torque. And the transfer function between the motor torque and the motor position is uh, of high importance for the control. This transfer, this transfer function, the, the body plot of this transfer function is given here, where it is of fourth order characterized by an entry resonance followed by resonance. And now the aim is to use the tuned signal to estimate this, this transfer function. So first we assume that nonlinear terms that come from friction and elastic torque are omitted. And uh, here we measure seven periods of the multi-sign signal. So on the same plot, we, we show the true model Z0 and the estimation of the frequency response function estimated without shaping algorithm. We observe that for seven, by measuring only seven periods, the estimation is biased and we cannot capture the, the anti resonance here. However, by using the shaping algorithm, the estimation in red is more accurate. This is explained by the improvement that we have seen of the SNR. So we don't need to measure for long because the shaping algorithm allowed to improve the, the SNR. And finally, now we consider that nonlinearity that comes from friction and elastic torque is active. And in this case, as I said before, to reduce the nonlinear expulsions on frequency response function, we realize we, we perform several realizations. In this case, we will perform 28 realizations. And first, we plot on the same plot also the true model G0 and the estimated frequency response function without the shaping algorithm. We see that for M equal to 28, the estimation is not able to capture also the, non, the, the entire resonance. However, where, when we use the, the shaping algorithm and for only 28 realization, the entire resonance is well captured. This is because the Distortions that come from the saturation are handled by the are handled by the shaping algorithm. So we don't need more realizations to reduce distortions that come from the saturation. So in conclusion, uh, the result, the method I, I showed here allow firstly to improve the quality of the SNR for noisy data. And also it allows to avoid to realize so many realization to reduce the to reduce the nonlinear distortions on the frequency response function. Notice also that uh, this approach can be used uh, wherever the, the saturation is uh, located in the in the closed loop setup. And for the work for the coming work, we, we are still working on how to prove the convergence of this uh, algorithm. With the validation on the with the validation on practical setup. Thank you. Thank you, Bassem, for your nice presentation. So we have uh, fifteen minutes for questions, so plenty of time. So the floor is for open for questions. 
Wasted. Yeah. Um, okay. Xavier, can I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead to Marion. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for this uh, really nice presentation. I, I really appreciated it. Uh, uh, why well, sometimes you go really fast because you really want to show us a lot of things, and but it's uh, definitely interesting. So thanks for that. Uh, I'm not sure to have well understand uh, in the third part. How do you um, uh, in slide? Uh, I think the slide is was the 47. 47. No, no, 74. 40, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I think it's this one. Oh, yeah, exactly. For the third step. Uh, I'm not sure to well understand how can you perform this third step? How is the multi sign clipping done? Yeah, um, actually, we. Um, Actually, we, we take we, we have an initial uh, signal, mm -hmm. and then uh, for example, okay, I will go to this slide first. Uh, yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, clipping function, okay. okay. So you can see the variation of the, the clipping function here. So yeah. it depends on the number of iteration. So so initially, for example, if we take the clipping function, it it, it is equal to zero point seven. So if I go to this, the, this algorithm, we will compare the max of the, sorry, we will compare the max of this uh, initial signal. Oh, sorry, sorry. We compare the max of initial signal, this initial signal. Okay. With uh, this value, the sigma times the max of the initial value. So if it is bigger or lower, we will limit the initial signal at, signal at this value. Okay, but how do you choose a sigma here, for example? Yeah, yeah, this is what I have tried to to present. That uh, ah, okay. So you can you you are free to choose. Ah, okay, okay. You can you can you can choose sigma. You can choose uh, sigma uh, constant sigma, but uh, the choice of sigma has an influence okay. the the convergence of the algorithm. So okay, now I better understand. Okay, I I I didn't get uh, at at your at the first glance I didn't get uh, this um, this slide. Okay, okay, and so if I will understand, you use only odd harmonic. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know if um, you can capture all the dynamics using only the odd dy dynamic for sure or or not? Uh. You you mean if we use only all the harmonics we can capture? Yeah. Uh, actually, this is the um, we can say this is the disadvantage of such method because I'm sorry I try to okay. find the slide. No worries. Because yeah, by by omitting some harmonics we we might uh, we might miss some dynamic. Okay. However, we uh, however we try to reduce the how to say the precision or to um, the frequency resonance in order to to capture the try to reduce the dis, the distance between uh, two successive frequencies so if, if you can see here uh, most of the signal is focused where we have uh, dynamic here uh, resonance and anti resonance mm. but uh, I, i'm not really familiar with all of this kind of, uh, of things but uh, i was wondering why did you choose a priori, the, the, the idea of using only odd dynamics. Oh, sorry. Uh, did you choose a priori the, the, the idea of using only odd dynamics? Well, why don't you use even dynamics? I mean, for example. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. Um, How yeah, did this, you choose yeah, that? Good, yeah. Um, so for this, I have to go back to. The very beginning of your presentation, maybe. Yeah. yeah sorry, maybe I was quick. Oh, that's why. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it it comes from here. So, because if, if okay. you see, if you see, if if we use only, um, it, actually, if we if we get if we have multi sign with the uh, only, um, you mean even even harmonics, for example. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah so if you have even harmonics you cannot you cannot uh, detect the um, the presence of nonlinear distortions uh, i have to say so if you you if you have odd harmonics and even uh, if you have uh, sorry even harmonics and even nonlinearity mm -hmm. in the output the, the harmonics will appear in the same with the same on the same excited harmonics so they will be superimposed with the same yeah. So you cannot, in this case, uh, distinguish between the the linear part and the non-linear part. So, so uh, as I as I have shown here, the, this is the, the tricky thing, is that um, by taking only odd harmonics, you can see that uh, the, the we can capture the non-linearity because we we ask the non-linearity shift the, the frequency content. So if you if you take odd uh, harmonics here, you cannot observe this. So, okay. It, it, to, to understand it, you can take a cosine or uh, cosine function, for example, uh, cosine square. Okay. Or we'll try to develop. Yeah. So. Okay. 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 Thank you. And my last question was about uh, the closed loop system application part. Uh, so you say that the open loop is unstable. So for this reason, you uh, come up with a closed loop uh, system identification solution. Okay, uh, fair enough. And um, what? Um, uh, zut, uh, I missed my question. Where is it? Uh, I, okay, I, I didn't really understand the part where you um, uh, design the G hat. Okay, oh, yeah. so you, you, you estimate, if I will understand, you first estimate the direct transfer and then you estimate the inverse afterwards. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. First way, yeah. First we measure the reference and the control signal. Mm -hmm. so, so you use the reference as input and you as out? Yeah, yeah. We, okay, first, we, first we are interested only on this transfer function. Okay, okay. I okay. understand now. Uh, uh, Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot for this nice presentation. You're welcome. Just by the way. Thank you, uh, you Marion. Um, uh, you had a question? Yes, please. please. Um, since you are in, in this, sli this slide, uh, I, I was wondering what are the, the assumptions that you need to use here? I mean, J transfer function must be invertible, right? Is yeah, it? yeah. This is the this is the, the assumptions we, we we made here. That's uh, and um, you mean the assumption we made on the transfer function or on the, the algorithm or the algorithm? Actually, actually, the, the stronger the strong assumption we made here is the inversibility of the this transfer function. Yeah. However. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not a transfer function, just a yeah. response. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but if if you if you want to to extract this for a MIMU uh, MIMU case, uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's why we. Uh... I I had the same question, but uh, yeah, since it's not a transfer function, I well, I can I can imagine what the idea behind. Yeah, actually, if if you can see, we are, we try to. We try to cancel this uh, this transfer yeah. function by multiplying by the reference. So, if if you excite your system with this equation, we will get out directly the the input or the control signal is equal to the desired uh, signal. So this is the, the idea behind. Uh, yeah. Mathieu, you had not a question because your mic is open. But uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, at the end, you you use uh, twenty eight uh, realizations, yeah. and what is the difference between two uh, realizations? What do you change? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, what we change is um, the, the the phase. Actually, yeah. Oh, okay. The the, the phase because okay. uh, you go back to the slide. Sorry. The initial phase. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So by, by changing the the phases, we change uh, we change the we modify the stochastic stochastic mm -hmm. nonlinearity. So that's why we we change the phase by changing serializations, and this allows us to calculate the uh, averages 
uh, especially uh, variance of the the variance of the nonlinear distortions, and we we can uh, reduce them uh, by averaging over realizations. So. Okay, thank you, Bissam. Any other questions? Yeah, if uh, if I may, uh, could you go back to sixty one to slide sixty one? Okay. Uh, yeah, or see, yeah, this one. Um, I was wondering uh, what are the difference uh, uh, between the di uh, why you need more uh, iteration because in fact my question is more uh, during your iteration does this g at change because uh, at certain point uh, in your example you uh, use uh, noise free. Uh, thing so normally in one go you should have a good a good model for uh, GR or is it because the BLA of uh, this transfer function between R and U change because when you hit the saturation the, the plan change and uh, yeah 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 this is the because yeah firstly we we don't scale the don't scale the multi sign yeah so when when we uh, excite we initially we will uh, hit the limits. And this creates yeah. distortions of the estimation. That's why by iterating, we, we improve the, the quality of this estimate and it requires some iterations to converge. Okay. And uh, would it, uh, because of course, every time you make an iteration, you have to make an experiment on the system. Yeah. So, um, because in your example, I've seen also that uh, you, you didn't repeat, uh, well, of course, repeating the experiment, it's the same as making an experiment, but uh, uh, of course, uh, by making multiple experiments uh, with different phase, you may remove the effects of the uh, nonlinearities in your estimate. Uh, does that help or does not? Uh, does yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, that's what I tried to explain here. Uh, yeah. I'll go to the last slide. Yeah, here I showed that for actually the more we increase uh, by increasing the number of realization m, we reduce the, the distortions. Yeah, yeah, but that's for your uh, g. But uh, that's uh, I guess that's the the plant uh, of the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for no, the, the the other plant, the uh, the closer loop. Yeah, yeah. So so for the other plant, we we actually we 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 didn't want to. Um, to waste a lot of time, uh, so the we, we, uh, the idea is to not accurately estimate this transfer function between the reference, but yeah. uh, uh, get an approximate estimation just to avoid saturation. So because yeah. the the most important part is to find this uh, transfer function, not to, between the reference and the. Uh, and would uh, because of course uh, you started uh, of course in any optimization or iteration uh, the, the first initialization is important. It looks like it looks like that you choose the uh, first uh, estimate of your R, which it's the saturation. Well, of course that's uh, that's something uh, which then of course uh, you uh, your uh, the the BLA of your model can change over time. But if you would choose an R, which is uh, somehow uh, yeah, small and uh, so a small amplitude, so well, uh, in order to not hit the saturation, and then you would directly be in a sort of uh, yeah, uh, maybe more linear uh, behavior, and maybe uh, maybe you would have less, uh, you would need less iteration, but I don't know. Uh, have you tried a different initialization of your algorithm? We're starting with small multi-sign, a big multi-sign and- uh, yeah, 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 this is interesting. We, we, we didn't try to, yeah, yeah. I understand what you are saying. I mean, yeah, but we avoid to hit the, the saturation in the initial, uh, initially, to reduce yeah. the number of iterations. So. Yeah, but of course you have still the nonlinear system uh, afterwards. But uh, well, at the end, yeah. uh, you would like to be around the uh, sort of a point uh, where you don't hit the saturation because that's also what you will, uh, uh, what you would, uh, uh, what you would like also. Uh, but I don't know if it would help. But uh, I, I was thinking about that. Uh, okay. You know, reduce the number of iterations. But uh, yeah. With no guarantee that it will work. Okay. 
So any other question because I was monopolizing the, the floor. So I, I do have one. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Rashid. Uh, yeah, um, w when you are performing the clipping, uh, I mean, clipping the signal in time domain uh, changes the, the spectrum of that signal. Yeah, yeah. So I was just wondering whether whether um, you are taking it into account those changes in, in, in spectrum. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, the clipping change, the um, clipping affects the amplitude spectrum and the phase spectrum. But in our case, uh, the, um, the aim is to uh, how to say to keep the same RMS. So we we that's why we impose when we go back to from here we, we try to go back to the the time domain. The phase, the amplitude phase is kept the same. So we keep the same initial amplitude spectrum, and we ex we ex extract only the phases. So so the changes that uh, that happens because of the clipping. Uh, will only be on the face. That's all the, the only uh, thing. I don't know if it is all. Uh, actually, we, we keep the same frequency continent, with the same uh, amplitudes, and the only thing that change are the faces. Okay, uh, I, I don't see very well how it can be done, but uh, I, I trust you. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, I guess it's time to have our uh, virtual coffee break uh, because we have also to take coffee and have technical breaks, I guess. Uh, and uh, so uh, thank you, Bassem, for uh, your nice presentation and for the nice discussion to all, uh, to everybody. And so I will stop the recording. Yes. And so we will meet at, uh, let's say, uh, to have a 15 minutes break, we'll, uh, we'll meet at uh, 16.20, I would say. Okay, fine.